Chapter 28, Finished. Psalm 22, verses 30 and 31. Posterity shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord to the coming generation. They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn, that he has done it. The final two verses of our psalm need to be considered together as the climax of the entire prayer. They encompass not only the effect of the cross of Christ on your life and mine, but they speak to the entire world, past, present, and in the time to come. It's not an exaggeration to say these two verses are summary of the entire Bible and God's salvation for the world. In order to understand these verses and their centrality to the entire biblical message, we must first suspend our notion of time, or at least attempt that feat. Consider that on the cross, Jesus is carrying all the sins of all of history, past, present, and future. But also consider that he can see back into time, past, and forward into eternity. The cross stands in the middle of all time. Or perhaps it would be better to call it the centerpiece of all time and for all time. With that in your mind and heart, consider these amazing truths from verses 30 and 31. Verse 30 begins with a nod to the past. Posterity shall serve him. The psalm has in mind all the people who had served God in ages past. We read through the New Testament truths of Jesus' death and resurrection. This verse is making the bold statement that every patriarch and matriarch in the Old Testament, in their work, their lives, their faith, their witness, and their death, were in service to God in Christ. The gallery of the faithful mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11 is just one example of this. This verse also includes a look into the future. There is a sense that the witness of faithful people of the past can speak into the future. Generations yet to be born will learn of God's righteousness. Thus, the gospel is and always will be eternal. It is truth from the past and truth for the future. And this is only possible because of Jesus on the cross gave his life for the past and the future. The gospel of Jesus is like the eternal presence of God, the great I am we encountered earlier. Hope has been building through the last few verses of Psalm 22. We have felt this along our pilgrimage. And now at the end of Jesus' amazing prayer on the cross, we encounter a crescendo of hope and promise that brings joy to every believer. What began in the harsh darkness of rejection, mockery, torture, is now concluding in the light of hope. Jesus spoke the first verse of Psalm 22 aloud, a headline announcement of everything that would follow. We saw this in the uncannily accurate descriptions of what was happening to our Lord, minute by minute. Then, in the second part of the psalm, we see a triumphant Christ who glorifies God, his Father, and speaks with confidence of his final victory, even as he was dying. We know that Jesus intended the entire text of Psalm 22 as his prayer on the cross, because here, at the end of this psalm of agony, we, become, we come face to face with eternal deliverance. Here we can see the fullness of Jesus' hope for us, for the church, and for all future generations. As Derek Kindner has written, no Christian can read this without being vividly confronted with the crucifixion. It's not only a matter of prophecy minutely fulfilled, but of the sufferer's humility. There's no plea for vengeance and his vision of a worldwide ingathering of the Gentiles. 
Read the verses at the start of this chapter once more. That he has done it reveals the final truth of Psalm 22. This phrase is a near exact echo of the final words of Jesus on the cross. It is finished. Can it be clearer? Jesus chose this psalm for his time on the cross, embodying it from the first cry of dereliction to the last statement of his final accomplishment. These final words present us with the prediction that the name and the fame of Jesus will be shared from one generation to another. It is a strong and positive message that, in an ultimate sense, the world has been set right. There's nothing more to be done, and that the focus of all future proclamations should be the gospel, that is, the perfect work and righteousness of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. O oh, Father, we glory in the cross of Jesus. Through it, Lord, you have saved the world. Lord, we pray that we would be a people of faith. Lord, that there would be a worldwide revival. Lord, that every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Something for you to think about. How do the last two verses of Psalm 22 summarize the entire Bible? Looking back on Psalm 22, which verse stands out for you and why? God bless your day.